Hello everyone and welcome to my Shadow Tavern. Today's episode features 10 great new series to binge, an intriguing mystery, the long-awaited thriller, a supernatural adventure, a historical drama, and more in today's issue. Make yourselves comfortable, warm yourself up with some delicious tea, and have a great time watching. Clarkson's Farm is a charming and brilliantly produced show about becoming a farmer that is at its core a silly and relaxed adventure. Despite this the show highlights the real issues surrounding farming and its impact on the ecosystem without being intrusively prescriptive. As the show progresses, it becomes clear that Jeremy Clarkson is genuinely invested in the life of a farmer and his amusing attempts at self-mockery are genuinely respected as they are all done to show the serious work of the support staff. The series shows the real personalities of everyone involved in running a large farm and stays true to its roots by combining humor and culture. The hallmark of Clarkson's farm is a more serious tone than the showman's other projects, but the humor and pranks are still present, giving the show a special charm. Ultimately, the show shows that farming is a complex and deep endeavor that requires knowledge and skill, and it is a welcome change in the life of Jeremy Clarkson. Happy Valley in early January, procedural fans were treated to the arrival of the new and impressive final season of Happy Valley. It is a multi-layered thriller that tells the story of Catherine, an experienced and dedicated cop who never forgets her role as a caring mother and grandmother. The series is a masterclass in effective, ripping and emotional storytelling that easily immerses the viewer. Happy Valley speaks to its realism in every frame, from the setting to the main characters. All of the characters in the series are believable, and the setting is a beautiful English valley shrouded in mist, dampness, and colorful buildings. The plot is consistent and accurate maintained. The great thing is that the creators of the series had a definite vision for the story from the beginning. The thriller has not been turned into a cash cow. A full nine years have passed since the first episode and the quality has not diminished one bit. Practically a must for all fans of crime shows. Poker Face is a comedy drama detective series created by acclaimed director Ryan Johnson, who recently brought us his two successful Knives Out films. The series tells the story of Charlie Cow, the perfect but not the most financially successful private investigator, with an uncanny ability to tell when someone is lying. She drives her Plymouth Barracuda from case to case, solving murders and catching criminals. Poker Face is reminiscent of a number of classic case of the week detective shows and movies such as The Rockford Files, The Fugitive, and of course Columbo. Ryan Johnson deliberately pays homage to the latter, not only with the the opening credits but also with the How Catch Him format. That is a reverse detective, where the criminal is known from the beginning and the main task of the detective is to find a way to prove his guilt. However, Poker Face does not just copy the formula of classic and famous mysteries, but creates a memorable and unique crime series, which is extremely different from most procedural TV shows. This is a truly fascinating show that has every chance of becoming a long-running and maximally interesting form of escapism for all mystery fans. If you like classic detective plots this series is definitely worth watching. Extraordinary. According to the synopsis, the series tells the story of the life of Jen, a girl who did not get superpowers on her 18th birthday in a world where everyone gets them. Despite this she embarks on a life journey in search of her possible superpowers, and on this journey she may discover the joy of simple ordinary life. Although the theme of people with superpowers is rather tired, Extraordinary offers a fresh and unpredictable scenario that keeps the viewer's attention. Jen and her roommates are played very convincingly, and the humor present in the series creates a pleasant atmosphere. The series is notable for its lack of action, adventure, or an emphasis on powers. Instead it presents ordinary people whose stories grow along with the characters, and that really appeals to viewers who are tired of the sheer number of superhero blockbusters. Finally the show is a pretty good British comedy. It differs from American shows in its humor, which does not rely on cliches but presents clean and wonderful stories and jokes. Overall it is a good choice for those who want to watch an unusual and entertaining sitcom about people with superpowers, a sitcom that does not suffer from the banality and triviality of its themes. Shrinking. The series tells the story of Jimmy, who is trying to cope with the loss of his wife. While maintaining his role as his father, friend, and therapist, he decides to take a new approach to dealing with people, unfiltered and brutally honest, in order to help them and maybe even come back to the light himself. The characters in the show are original and not stereotypical. The relationships between them are complex and emotional, and the real human problems are well drawn. The show is a successful combination of comedy and sadness, which can cause both laughter and tears. The series was created by three actors, writers, and directors, familiar to viewers from many popular comedies. Jason Siegel plays Jimmy himself, and his presence is felt in almost every scene. Harrison Ford, who advertises shrinking on the posters, also appears frequently in the series, although his role is not central. However, his importance in the plot is much greater than it seems at first glance. If you are looking for a smart and entertaining comedy with serious ideas, this series is worth watching. 
based on the book of the same name by Caroline Kepnes, you tells the story of a dangerously charming young man named Joe, who goes to extreme lengths to infiltrate the lives of those he is attracted to. After moving from its parent platform, the series debuted on Netflix and has been well received by viewers, thanks to its gripping plot and fluid development told through the eyes of anti-hero Joe. However, the series remains dark and scary enough, but also interesting enough to help it evolve. The story begins with Joe falling in love with Beck when she shows up at the bookstore. He starts stalking her on social media, watching her house, stealing her stuff, and learning all of her contacts. As he progresses, Joe's actions become increasingly creepy, yet he remains so calm that everything he does seems normal to the viewer. The fourth season was released this year, and it differs from the previous three in tone and quality. There have been some changes in the cast and setting, and the sequel almost no longer carries the events of the previous part of the story. Reviews of the new episodes are now almost all negative. However, the acting and cinematography are still excellent. Fans of the series can leave their opinion about the new season in the comments. Women at War is a French miniseries set during the Great War. The series tells the stories of four women whose lives intersect in a French town on the front lines. The series explores the theme of women's participation in war and introduces viewers to a world where the villains are not just national enemies. Women at War also explores the everyday issues of chauvinism and sexism of the early 20th century in a compelling realistic narrative. The series captures the setting and atmosphere of the time well, helping viewers step back in time and relive those moments with the characters. The costumes, architecture, furniture, and other production values of the series are excellent. While historical accuracy is not the main element, the portrayal of wounds, the morale of the troops, and the treatment of the wounded seems quite accurate. The plot and acting are good, though sometimes a bit overdramatic and forced. Overall Women at War is an excellent French series that pays tribute to the female heroines who fought in the war. Lockwood & Co. is a television adaptation of the book series by Jonathan Stroud, created by acclaimed British director and comedian Joe Cornish, best known for the film Attack the Block. The story is set in London in the year 2023, but in this world about 50 years ago something strange happened. Ghosts appeared that can hurt and kill people. The governments of the world have passed curfew laws to protect their citizens, and Lockwood & Co. are the only independent ghost hunters. The main characters are teenagers with unusual psychic abilities, who fight to keep London safe. They must not only track down and destroy ghosts, but also solve the mystery that could prevent a major catastrophe. I must say that even though the series looks like a typical young adult project, it is more logical and of higher quality than its competitors. And the characters in this show are not as annoying as in the others, and they have a backstory that allows you to see how the different qualities of the personalities manifest themselves. Each episode has a complete story and there is mystery and drama. The construction of the world in the series and the presentation of the terminology comes naturally through artistic techniques. The visual CGI and setting believably convey the horror and suspense of a haunted world. Lockwood & Co. Is is a good, fresh detective thriller, primarily aimed at teenagers, with well-developed characters and plot. Big Bet. In short, Big Bet is a fascinating series with a fast and interesting plot, excellent acting and comedic elements. In the series the viewer follows a born businessman Cha Mu Sik, who moves to the Philippines after being accused and fleeing persecution. He meets shady partners who offer him a new concept of a casino bar, where players play back rat with coupons that are then exchanged for liquor and the liquor for cash. Mu Sik doubts the legality of such a scheme, but tries to improve it, develop it in another country, deal with all possible legal problems and at the same time, develop a strategy to win over the political and business business circles in the Philippines. The plot of the series is quite intriguing and fast-paced. Sometimes the narration gets a bit too violent, but it does not affect the perception of the plot. All the actors in the series do a good job with their roles. Big Bet is a large-scale crime comedy drama that easily grabs the audience's attention from the very beginning. The Snow Girl The series begins with a family attending the Epiphany celebrations in Malaga in 2010. When the father buys a balloon for five-year-old Amia, she runs away and disappears. Surveillance video suggests that she has been kidnapped, but there is no real progress in the investigation until Amia's 12th birthday. One day Myron, a journalism student, receives a tape of the girl alive and well. This event reopens the investigation, and Myron begins her own search for Amia. Overall, the series easily grabs the viewer's attention from the beginning and holds it almost until the end. The resolution of most of the plot occurs at the end of the series. But there is a typical twist of Netflix projects. Enough questions remain that there is a possibility of a new season. Anyway, the characters were interesting and the actors did a great job. The movie's approach to storytelling is also fascinating, even though it jumps from one year to the next in its timeline. Although Amaya's on-screen presence is limited to the videos Murren receives at yearly intervals, the patient viewer will get the full picture of the story by the end of the season. Overall, The Snow Girl is a good series that doesn't drag. The six episodes, despite the somewhat open-ended finale, can easily be seen as a miniseries, which is exactly what is needed to grab the viewer's attention and tell the story of the search for the missing girl in its entirety. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Feel free to share this video with your friends. Subscribe to the channel and click the buttons below the player. And see you in the next issue. Bye.